In this video, I'm creating a simple personal stream. And the goal of that is to add anything that you find on the internet and that you might want to read later, but it isn't so important and you really need to drag it through your system. And we'll add a filter to it. So anything that sticks around there for more than two months gets filtered out, keeping your feed fresh and giving you a quick place to access if you have some downtime on your mobile phone and you wanna do some light reading or browsing through some topics you've seen online. Okay, I'm in my demo space and let's create this table. I do add page, I'm gonna call it personal feed and give it a quick icon. And then we're gonna pick table. I'm gonna add a couple of columns. The first one's gonna be easy. That's gonna be the URL because anything that you link to on the internet will probably have a URL. And then we're gonna add two checkboxes. One is going to be red so that you can mark anything that's done. And the other one is going to be keep so you can mark anything that you wanna keep around longer than the time set. Then finally, I'm gonna make this a bit bigger. We're going to add the created on column. So let's look down, you have here the created time. I'm gonna call that created. And that will tell us how long something's been around. Okay, so now we have our basic table set up and let's make sure it gets sorted and filtered. Now the sort is pretty easy. We're just gonna sort it on the created date. And the filter is something where we're gonna add, first of all, if it's red, and we're gonna say it shouldn't be red. This means that if you mark the red thing, it will get hidden. And then we wanna add a small filter group, and that means that if keep is blank, meaning that if you mark keep, then this will be ignored. And we want to say anything that's older than two months should be filtered out. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna say create it, and then you can't pick two months. Uh, that's a limitation within Notion. So how do you work around that? And the trick for that is to build a formula. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an extra. We're gonna call this age and pick formula. And then we need to put some code in here. And the trick is to find out in months how old something is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick a date between and we're going to say the time between created and now, and we want it in a month. And what that will do is it will give us the difference between those two and it will go into the negative, meaning that now the age is zero. And if you wait two months, it will be on minus two. And based on that, we can start filtering. So we're gonna change created to age and we're going to say if it's more than a minus two. Now, if you want three months, you can make it minus three. And if you would like weeks, you could change the filter formula to weeks. I will put the formulas in the description so you can copy and paste it from there. Everything's set up, the filter is there, the sort is there. If you want to use this on mobile though, you might wanna have a card view, which makes it easier to browse and click on things. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna to go to add view and then click on create. And I don't really care what's there because I just need it so that this pop-up is available. And then I can go to my default view and pick duplicate. And then the duplicate has the same filter and sort. So if we update that and we go here and I'm gonna call it gallery view and I'm gonna pick gallery. Then I get a neat gallery view of what I just built with the same sort and filter without having to type everything over. And I'm just gonna remove that small thing that I put here. And everything's pitchy. Now that we have this set up, we want to be able to add stuff to it and to make it easy. I'm going to use the save to Notion extension. I did a full video on that earlier. I'll put a link up here. So here we're just gonna use the basic uh, the design has changed a little bit. It looks much nicer now. So if you don't recognize this straight away, you probably need to update to the latest version. I've got this page open here for cats and I wanna add that to my personal feed. I'm gonna go to the save to Notion and then tab on this one. Say add a new form and pick my personal feed. So I need to search a bit. Then I'm not gonna use templates in this case. I am going to clip the content because I want to have 
save the notion and try and add all the information into the notion page meaning that if i browse this later on my mobile for example it i won't have to open the web page and wait for it to load it shows me the name here and there's a couple of hidden fields it will take the url and paste that in there it has the icon and it has a content image would we'll take an image from the page and this information is all that i want to add but there's some other fields that i want there as well so i'm going to pick add a field and i'm going to say keep that means that if i save something i think this is important i absolutely have to read this i can just tap it straight away i'm going to add the tags field because i would like to be able to add a few tags to it say like what it's related to simple enough go back and then we can do the whole step from beginning so i'm going to close this i'm on this wikipedia article on cats and if I want to add it, I just go here, click personal feed, say, hey, I want to keep this. So I want to keep it around to read it for sure. I want to add a tag to it. Now it already fills in cat, but that's because I did this before. And then click add new page. So we go back to Notion. You can see that the cat page has been added and I can open it and you can see all the details that have been scraped from the Wikipedia site in there and this will auto roll over. So the benefits of using this stream is that I don't have to think about it. So it's not like my inbox. My inbox I like process every day and have to keep track of. This is just stuff I might wanna read. So I'm standing at the bus or I'm waiting around and then I can check it. And then of course, once I open it and go like, okay, I read this and I tap that one, it disappears from my list. So how does it look on mobile? I'm quickly sharing my mobile phone and I open the personal feed. And as you can see, the table view isn't super useful, but luckily we created this gallery setup and that shows all the pages that are in this example. It's a bit boring now, so let me add a couple of interesting slides. Okay, so I added a couple of links and as you can see, then now like my browser shows me what I captured, it's easy to click. And if I wanna read it, I can just tap on it and basically anywhere go through the article all the way until I think, okay, I've read this. And then I can use like a simple tab to remove it from the stream. So that's my super simple stream setup. I like it because I don't have to maintain it. Like my inbox, I need to clear that out once in a while. This one, if I don't look at it, it will slowly but surely empty out because the two months pass. And that means that anything that I put in there is something that I know I would like to dig into this, but if I don't get to it in the next two months, then it doesn't really matter. And that saves me a lot of mental energy, but it also gives me the ability, like when I have a spare five minutes waiting for the bus, to know like, oh, this is the place where is stuff that I can then read or take some leisure time in without like it taking me too much effort. I put a lot of different stuff in there. So I could of course only link in articles, but I also did YouTube videos, things that I might consider buying so I can relook at them during the month when I have like a, a leisure minute. But if I don't really care about it, like it doesn't come up every two weeks, I probably can do without. Hope you liked the video. If you wanna watch anything else, you can be over here. And remember, you're awesome, keep it up two months when you think it's important and you just want to keep it around for longer.